effort, we have to to review that what we have done so far in the convolution topics that we were looking for widening of the spectrum or in other words to limit or narrow the wavelength of the signal which of course will be uh, uh, will be arrived by removing the effect of the source wavelet widening, especially if we are using sources other than the dynamite, because as we all know, dynamite have finite wavelet uh, lengths or uh, wavelet widths. So today we are going not to speak about whitening or uh, spiking in general, but we are going to speak about the uh, remove of multiples, uh, which is one of the major problems we have because they, uh, they occur very often, especially if we have uh, low velocity layer and this low velocity layer will, will have strong reflection coefficient from both ends. So the energy, the seismic energy, will be trapped in this layer. Also, also another, uh, another application is for marine surveying. Because also we have for marine surveying, we have multiples due to the effect of the presence of uh, the water layer. And the water layer itself uh, have uh, high reflection coefficient uh, with the air at the surface, and also high reflection coefficient of the bottom between the water and the sea bed uh, sediments, and so on. So sometimes multiples mask uh, important data we need, and or also may uh, push us to towards making wrong identification of the subsurface geology. Okay, so what is the problem we have? The problem we have at this point, this layer with finite uh, thickness we assigned here by delta Z. The ray coming from deeper interfaces reflecting to the surface is reflected at the uh, reflected at the uh, upper surface back to the lower surface and then to the upper surface and so on until it is recorded. If we have geophone here, it will be recorded here, and if we have geophone here, it will be recorded here. The interesting feature here we have that the multiple repeats itself at certain time delay. This certain, uh, this certain time delay uh, equals del 2 delta z divided by c, where c is the speed of the wave propagation. This, of course, after removing the normal move out. So, this play after removing the normal move out. You will see that the signal here is repeated here, is repeated here. Okay? We have repetition in the signal, but due to it, it moves longer, but more of the energy is attenuated or absorbed, and the amplitude is. Uh, is more is, is is smaller or is is lower? I want to have I have a question for you. Looking at this diagram, do you have uh, anything that you see seems to you unusual? I want you to to use your imagination. Use your head. Yes, yes, very good, very good. 
Maybe this white glass is responsible for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we have a change in phase. Why we have a change in phase? Because here we have negative reflection coefficient. The negative reflection coefficient reflect the polarity of the motion. So when it comes here, it's recorded in reverse phase or reverse polarity. But when it reflects again, the reverse is reversed. And the reverse of the reverse is, is the normal one. So we return back with the normal phase as you see. So all what we have that we have a change in amplitude due to distances and also we have a change of phases due to the change of reflection coefficient. That's why we, we, we say we have positive reflection coefficient and we have negative reflection coefficient. Positive will have the reflection in the uh, normal or vertical direction. Negative will have the reflection in the opposite or dilation direction. Okay? So, now from the figure we have, we understand that the signal repeats itself at a certain time lag, but with different phase. So, we can think of filter in terms of autocorrelation in order to remove such multiple effect using certain time lag. So the main idea of predictive deconvolution is that if we delay the signal with alpha second, alpha seconds here represent the delay between the multiple phases arriving at the G-phones. So, and adapt the amplitudes. Adapt to, to uh, increase or decrease the amplitude. What does that mean? Uh, adaptation. To make the amplitude uh, adapted so that we can, uh, if, if say we, we, we are, we are summing Two, um, two identical amplitudes, but different in phase, what we'll have at the end, we'll have zero amplitude. And this is what we are looking for. What really we are looking for is to remove the multiples. So how do we remove the multiple? By using certain time lags, and these certain time lags will, uh, will, will mean that we are uh, somehow adding the uh, parameters together with different phases and we adapt amplitude, make the amplitude uh, increase or decrease so that they are nearly the same to reduce the noise and then the multiple is totally removed. It will fit again in itself, it will revive to it itself and this means that the primary, primary reflection will fit with the first order reverberation, while, uh, whereas the first order reverberation will match the second order reverberation and so on. So we want to minimize the error E for the filter coefficient f of t according to the fo uh, following relation. So this is the error estimate equal summation over t. x of t is a signal minus this is a convolution between the, fil the, the filter uh, f of t filter coefficient convolved with x of t minus a delayed the, the, the same signal but delayed with uh, alpha uh, time or alpha seconds all raised to the second power and then or, or equivalently we can 
make this plus a plus alpha change the reference time. So x of t plus alpha minus f of t times x of t, or uh, sorry, convolve it with x of t all raised to the second power. Our main problem is that how to define the wavelet itself is to take such wavelet. What, what is a wavelet? If this is the record, this is a trace without any reflection. And suppose you have the wavelet of this form. So at each reflect, reflection, you will have such thing. The amplitude depends on the reflection coefficient. And also, we may have different due to change in reflection coefficient. So, so this part is called wavelet. So the problem for the predictive deconvolution here is to determine this wavelet. For the present situation, we will choose the original signal, but with the delay alpha of the form, d of t equal x of t plus alpha. So now we understand why he changed the reference of time in the previous equation. And then we apply the, this wavelet into the normal equation, which is autocorrelation uh, between x and x, convolved with a filter, equal autocorrelation for t plus alpha. And this is called the normal equation. Then we are going to design the required filter based on this normal equation. But first, we will discretize the relation. What we mean by discretizing the relation is that uh, instead of dealing with the, with the functions in analytic form, I don't know, I feel there is something unusual, unusual in the class today. Is there any, any problem here? In the okay. Meaning that if I gave you function f of x equal sine x defined in the range from minus pi to pi. So this is called analytic relation, analytic function. If I'm asking you to discretize this equation, say for simplicity, for the steps of pi divided by 2, so I will have discrete at minus pi, then another value at minus pi over 2, then at 0, okay, then at pi over 2, and then at pi. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points. So sine minus pi equal 0. Okay? Sine minus pi over 2 equal minus 1. 
okay? Sine zero equal zero. Pi over two, sine pi over two is one. And here we have zero. So, f of x turns to be this set of numbers. Zero, minus one, zero, one, zero. Based on the interval we used. We can, of course, we can make pi over four, uh, by over 6, uh, whatever we, we want, but in this case we will increase the number of points we have. So, the same manner we are discretizing this function. So, we are going to discretize this and also to, to discretize this at certain uh, sampling interval. So, the discretization will be uh, this, the, now it's uh, inverted. Now the, the right hand side becomes summation from 0 to n. Here it was, uh, here it was summation. Sorry, I'm sorry, this it's, it's okay. It's, uh, I messed up with, uh, with this one. Okay. So, here we have summation over t, but in the discretization, t is replaced with the number of points in the range from 0 to t, or from the bound of, of t, from 0 uh, point to n, where n is the total number of samples we have. Uh, uh, phi xx of i minus n times f of n plus epsilon square f uh, of i all this under uh, this one this part only under the summation because this represent the stabilization uh, term and equal f of x x uh, of i plus n alpha okay this Discrete form can be written here in matrix form. And we, we do this uh, more often. You, you studied linear algebra in, in, in here, yeah. and you, you, you work it with, with matrix, matrices. Yes. And so you, you might be understanding how we obtained this matrix form from that one. You understand? Or you need? Clarification? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, for f, f of n, this is the unknown we are looking for. So, here, this column is the column of unknown, f of n. Okay. Here, we have the, uh, the coefficient for determining f of n. And this one uh, from 0 to n. So here we have from 0 elements, columns, to n. So phi xx at 0, phi xx at 1, and so on. For the vertical one, we are speaking about the order here, which is, uh, uh, here is i. So here, uh, no, no, sorry. This is delay uh, shifted, phi x x of one, and here we are another shift, phi x x of two, and uh, still and until we arrive uh, phi uh, of n, and this shift we have the first uh, point also uh, shifted. When we multiply this column by this matrices, we have the original. Uh, matrix or the original system of linear equation we have here. So if you multiply F, you know multi ma matrix multiplication, of course. So here we will be phi x x of 0 times F of 0 plus epsilon square. Uh, uh, phi F of 1 
times phi x x of 1 f2 times f of x of 2 until the end of the summation and then we do, we do the same for the second row and third row until we end with the last row we have the, the column vector at the right hand side represent the correlation function with different delays so these are the correlation functions we have and this one is the correlation function also we can uh, estimate so we end up with this unknown and this obtained through uh, maybe least squares or any other depending on any other technique depending on the nature of the problem itself okay and these equations only the autocorrelation of the seismic trace and the shifted autocorrelation phi x x n plus n alpha are used to define the filter sample f of n so we defined the filter samples from f0 to fn and then we use this filter to filter out the, the record if you have look at this example here we have an example showing multiples see these are multiples multiples because they are following the same feature it's a, it's like multiplying the, 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 the same thing many times that's why we're we're calling it's multiples but now we have a change in in time so we have changes in time this changes in time well uh, if i i i i interpret this as reflectors i will end up with large number of, of layers that are not actually present okay and also it will affect deeper the definition of deeper layer so when i am using the the predictive deconvolution filter i am ending up with uh, autocorrelation or filtering using the autocorrelation of the of the of the signal with itself but with certain delays and the result would be as you see here about I, I, I think most of the most of the multiples are now uh, gone of course any technique we are going to use will always always give uh, not 100 percent uh, removal of or such we, I, I will always uh, still have some uh, remains that's why if you are asking so uh, we studied uh, many type many types of deconvolution we studied many types of corrections so are we going to use all this at once it's like toolbox like the 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 plumber for example toolbox he will bring every tool he have he has and go to fix the problem he, he may not use all the tools he will choose the proper one to solve the problem we have okay so that's also the situation for your, yourself you are understanding many or studying many many uh, tools but you are not expecting expecting to use all uh, these tools uh, at the same time for the same record or for the same project maybe you are going to use a uh, uh, vnr filter maybe you are going to use uh, some other uh, deconvolution like like this one predictive statistical deterministic and so on maybe are you you are not going to use all of this you are using just certain types of filters because using such filters like what you have done in your assignment some uh, filters do remove the uh, the sorry do remove uh, noise sometimes also 
the normal move out, remove uh, noise, but those noises that are, uh, are, not by, are not removed by certain tool, we are going to use another tool to, to manage and so on. Here we have another synthetic example. I didn't uh, give you the, the equations for, for this example, not to, to make things complex. But here we have uh, the situation where we have certain, this is the, the situation, we have number of reflections. And as you see, we have reflection one, uh, sorry, number of multiples. As you see, we have, this is the reflection, and this is the second order multiple, this is the third order, multiple, fourth order, multiple, and so on. And as we agreed that due to the reverse in, in, in reflection coefficient, we expect to have a reverse in polarity, and also we expect to have a change in amplitude according to geometrical spreading, uh, according to uh, absorption and other types of attenuation. The second diagram represents the filter itself defined by delta T plus R1 delta T T minus tau. So if we apply this, we will have this one. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> delta T and delta T, delta T uh, minus tau, one. If, we, if I'm going to evaluate this value, this uh, expression, Basically, I think we agree that for delta T, I have only two values, one when T equals zero and zero elsewhere, okay? So if I'm going to evaluate the expression F of T, equal delta T plus R R1 thank you delta T minus tau tau so I have two delta T terms so at T equal 0 F of 0 equal delta T of 0 Delta of zero equal one. Okay, plus R one. Delta T of zero here, zero minus tau one. It will equal zero. Okay, it's not one. This equals zero. Why is equal zero? Because I'm, it, it doesn't care, it's not so important what's here. The so important is that when I evaluate the argument of the function, it will equal zero. So here the argument of the function is not zero. Okay, so delta, delta t minus tau one equal zero at t equal zero. So we end up At f of t0, we have 1, this one, representing the original phase. Then, at f of t, at 
f of tau 1, I have delta of tau 1 plus r1 delta of t minus tau 1. Okay? So, now tau 1 is not 0. So, delta of t1 of tau 1 equal 0. Okay? But here, t minus tau 1, this term equal 0. So, delta here equal 1. You are having problem. You have mathematical problem and it, it was so much clear in the, in the exam you have. So, at tau 1, it will equal also 1 multiplied by R1. Okay? So, that's why I have this value less than the unit value. So, if I convert it the g of t with f of t, I will remove all later arrivals, all multiples, and I will end only with the original phase. Okay? This is a representation of this synthetic example. As you see, we have here number of multiples and this case before the application of, uh, of the filter of the, the multiple, um, of the predictive deconvolution filter and here the situation after removing the multiple. Uh, the final point we have, or the final uh, discussion we have about deconvolution is called the spiking deconvolution. The spiking, you, you know, we have such sources that does not possess a spike or narrow wavelet. Like, for example, the water uh, or air gun and like other sources like uh, vibrosize and so so uh, we want to end at uh, the source or the, the wavelet to become as a spike as we can as we understand that if we are dealing with the spikes we are uh, having more uh, resol resolving power for the subsurface image so, one of the most used deconvolution procedures in practice is a spiking deconvolution. Uh, in fact, a sp a spiking deconvolution is one or, or the same like the predictive deconvolution we have just uh, speak uh, about. But here we have the time lag equal uh, one sample. So, if we apply the predictive deconvolution with time lag of one sample, we are expecting to make a spiking uh, of, the, uh, of the record. Uh, we have uh, examples of the spiking deconvolution that we are going to see in, in the next uh, slide, in which spiking deconvolution results on a single air gun wavelet and a synthetic, and on a synthetic short record with this air gun wavelet are shown. We have to note also that, although the spiking is not perfect, clearly the temporal resolution is increased. So, before leaving this point, and we, we, we have much discussion about, can any one of you tell me why a spike, a spiking of the wavelet is important. Why we are exerting all such effort to spike? What what is what is the benefit of this? Can anyone uh, tell me? 
like like this spike we have. Now we have a spike in in temperature. Yes, can you explain? I, I, I want to ex explanation. Suppose suppose that we have situation like this. We have two reflectors, small depths apart, or a small thickness of the layer. So, here we have, we should have a reflection, and here we should have, say, another reflection, maybe reversal. Okay? So, what is the case? If the wavelet is not spike, suppose it is, say, something like that. Here, it will be, and then, so, on the record, you cannot differentiate between the two reflectors. You may think, this is the signature of single reflector. But if you remove it, or, or even it may look like one reflector in this form. This waveform, or this Wavelet is a result of two wavelet combined with each other. But because we have small thickness and we have small time interval, they are superimposed on each other and producing such output. So what we are doing in deconvolution, what we mean by whitening of the spectrum, what we mean by spiking, is that we want to limit this one as much as we can so that we arrive to a spike or maybe something like that. That's what we are looking for. When we apply to the, to the record, we will have the resolving power to see both reflector clearly on the record. And this will happen only if we apply successful spiking algorithm. Okay? Now, now we understand. Now we understand what is the importance of applying the spikes and so. Note that although spike, spiking is not perfect, clearly the temporal resolution is increased after the spiking deconvolution procedures. Events have sharpened, like here we have another example, have sharpened, and each event starts with a large positive peak, which is desired in the interpretation. It can be shown that spiking deconvolution performs best when the wavelet is minimum phase, then the spiking deconvolution filter is stable and appears to be a perfect inverse filter for the minimum phase signal. Here we have the situation for the air gun, as you see, if you remember the air gun effect, we have the air gun and we have the bubble effect, and we have also the, uh, the ghost, if you remember. Do you remember? Yes. So here is the signal, and this is the ghost, and now we have the effect bubbles. 
this clearly will distort and minimize the resolution we will have in our uh, record. But after spiking, most of the later phases are, uh, are removed and uh, we, we, we end up with only the, the wavelet, the, the source as a primary source itself and the cost. As we said, we are not perfect. We cannot remove all the unwanted uh, effects. Rather, we are looking to minimize we are looking to minimize their effects so that we have better uh, interpretation for the record. This is a final uh, slide showing also the same for the air gun. We have uh, clearly, we can clearly see how the, how, how the record is enhanced, especially in the neighborhood of the reflection themselves. Okay. Now uh, I want to to have discussion with you about uh, Fourier series and Fourier transform and so on, and it is related to what happened in your answer to uh, last Thursday uh, test. So if you are going to, to approximate a function, you cannot approximate a function with a constant. Most of you f uh, fell or fall in this uh, in this problem. So it's not uh, a problem. You, you, you understand? We have for the for the Fourier series approximation we have Coefficients. These coefficients are the A, A is coefficient, and B is coefficient. A is coefficient is associated with the cosine terms, whereas the B is coefficient is associated with the sine terms. Uh, e is A of zero, as you know, it's uh, integration of the, excuse me, of the function itself, and I told you this represents the, the DC shift or the DC error, the shifting of the zero point or zero level uh, uh, by certain value. This function is shifted from zero. So the first thing to is to define A's and also the second thing is to define the constant. A n, it's uh, f of x cosine n x dx. So we have to evaluate this equation, this integration, to find the values for the coefficients. Okay? And the same holds true for the sine coefficients Bn. Of course, there is. Uh, uh, I guess 1 over 2 pi and here f of x sine 
and x dx. So I have to evaluate the integration and the output will be a function of n. So I will have uh, something like n multiplied by a certain value. So defining n by 1, I will have a1 equal something. Defining n by 2, I have uh, I have n2, uh, I have a2 equal something, and so on. And the same for, for b. Okay? Uh, one of the interesting properties is that I have the so-called even function and odd function. Okay? If I am having odd function, what is the difference between the odd function and even function? The difference is that for, for the odd function, the starting and the end are the same. The starting in the range and the end of the function are the same, but with negative value, with negative sign, which means that when I integrate, the result will be zero. Okay? So if I'm saying, okay, this is an odd function, it means that the output will, will be zero, so the integration will tend to be zero, and the, uh, the coefficients are not usable. Uh, one, uh, ne the one next to you is uh, Helmi Amir. Your name is? I'm Amir. And uh, although we have discussion on blend space, but also, I, I don't know, uh, it doesn't uh, appear on your uh, solution. Only uh, two out of the 14 who uh, solved uh, or who succeeded to, to submit the, the exam uh, uh, were successful to some extent. So that's why I give them the highest uh, grade. I'm not, uh, for example, uh, in fact, I'm not asking for the perfect, but if you are approaching and I'm feeling that you use your head, I will give you good mark. I'm not looking for the final, uh, for the final solution, but what is important is that you are using your head right and you are going approaches. Maybe you, you, you made mistake in, uh, in uh, sign or so, and you, but the, you still uh, follow the right path for that. And also, when we, when we uh, go to speak about what is the basic condition for the Fourier, uh, Fourier representation or approximation, what is the basic uh, property, uh, it was uh, stated clearly, it's orthogonality. The orthogonality is the basic point in the approximation. The basis function should be uh, orthogonal, and of course it should be integrable. If it's not integrable, so we cannot use. So, but uh, at least uh, nobody and every, uh, like, like you were talking to each other with a, with a mobile. Uh, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. Are you, are you calling somebody to have such, uh, to come out with such uh, answers? It's, it's, it's like, it's, it looks like you are taking from the same source. And we call this plagiarism. But the one who gave you or advise you, advise you wrong. Give you bad advice. I don't know, uh, I am suspecting, not, I'm not sure this uh, actually happened. Uh, so we, we have to, uh, uh, looking at, or, uh, in concern with your answer, I, I, I think now I, I understand you uh, 
better uh, at the start there were some uh, cultural uh, gap between, between us so I understand that you need to have the, the, the confidence enough confidence to express yourself and really most of you need this and um, I, I, I'm not sure I can help in this but uh, I'm here uh, if, if anybody wants to to improve I will help uh, indeed uh, finally I give uh, another second choice for those who could not uh, submit their uh, exam so we, 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 we didn't agree we proposed today from 6 to 7 but no one uh, responded whether this is okay or not but I'm not sure whether it's okay or not if not so we can look for another uh, time maybe Friday or something You all okay? Yeah. Why, why did you see? Why did you say that? Every day I visit the the, 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 the page on Facebook and no answer. Then I go back every day. No, no, no one. Uh, okay, no problem. Okay, so this is uh, another opportunity uh, for all. You can benefit uh, from it, especially uh, those who had bad uh, grades and as you know it will be the maximum will be 75% uh, from 100% this is taken as penalty because to give those who have who have uh, who had good grades as a first uh, uh, stage to benefit from excellence okay thank you and wish you to meet uh, wish to meet you tomorrow twice one at one to two and uh, the other one at four to five inshallah.